Musicians in bars getting beer. It's Sue Foley. How are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm great. It's very nice to hear from you. And why don't we start with a brief bio? Just tell us briefly how you grew up in Canada. All right. Well, I was born in Ottawa and um, stayed there until I was about, I don't know, 13. And then I moved to Edmonton. Um, I was at, in Edmonton from 13 to almost 16. And then I moved back to Ottawa. But I started actually playing guitar in Edmonton. Oh, did you? Uh, when I moved out there, yeah, because we had moved so far from my home and uh, I was basically bored. Um, so I asked my father for a guitar and my father played guitar and my three older brothers played guitar. So um, it just seemed natural that I would also play guitar. Um, I'm the youngest girl of five kids. Um, so, yeah, I got to Edmonton. I was bored. I had no friends and I asked my dad for a guitar and he gave me one and uh, I just sort of sat in my room for the next I don't know how many years <laughs> <laughs> two years at least yeah uh, that I just spent in my room by myself I mean I, I had a few friends but they were they were also you know sort of involved with music so I kind of got into that and um, moved back to Ottawa at 15 and uh, started going to the blues jams there Great. Um, when I was about 16, I started going to the Blues Jams and then started playing professionally at 16 with local Ottawa artists. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, by the time I graduated high school, I'd already had a couple, you know, three years professional under my belt. And I moved out to Vancouver and started my own band out there, the Sue Foley Band. Um, and then... Yeah, so I did that for a while. I booked myself. I sort of learned the business by just being so pretty entrepreneurial at a young age, you know, with my own group and making my own posters, booking my own gigs, sort of learn the ins and outs of the business. And uh, then we got picked up by um, a California artist as because we were a blues band. And we got picked up by a harmonica player named Mark Hummel, who's pretty well known in the blues scene. And Mark took us stateside because Mark's from California, and that got us into the U.S., you know, and I, I mm -hmm. always wanted to be in the U.S. As a, as a blues musician, just because that's where the, you know, the music originates, and sure. there was just, and that, at that time, there was still an amazing scene happening. Stevie Ray had just broken out, the Fabulous Thunderbirds had just broken out, and Albert Collins was on the scene. I mean, there was just so many great um, artists touring, so, um, so we got stateside and sort of got connected with everybody. And um, by the time I was 21, I ended up in Austin, Texas. I was brought down to Austin by Clifford Antone, who owned Antone's nightclub and record uh, label. And he signed me at 21. So I ended up being an Austin-based artist by the time I was 21. And you did a few albums, um, several albums. Um, yeah, from I did the, from four Magic. albums with Antone. Yeah. And then moved on from there. I, I ended up um, getting pregnant in my late 20s. I mean, I stayed in Austin throughout the 90s, and that was all through my 20s. Uh, by the end of the decade, I was pregnant, and I was close to 30 years old. So I went back to Canada to have my son and raise my son. And um, hmm. damn, time flies. You know, yeah. my, son's 21. <laughs> my son's 21 now. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And I'm back in Austin. Uh, you know, I raised him in Canada, and now he's in New York, and he's a great jazz musician, but he's also oh, a, a mathematician. He's a university student, doing great, and uh, he's all set up, and I just thought, you know, this is a good time for me to go back to Texas, and we recorded the Ice Queen down in Austin. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, yeah, with a lot of, like, that's my latest album, and we recorded that yeah. with, you know, all, a lot of the people I'd known in Austin when I lived there, but also a lot of people, a lot of new people, new friends. I'd like to interject there and say congrats on your Juno nomination for the Ice Queen. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we're, ri you we're riding a, a nice wave of success with the album, and we're really, we couldn't be more pleased. Oh, that's um, great. Just been, it's just been really well received and, and uh, lots of positive, you know, just vibes about it. So it's been great. So not to jump ahead, but let's let's go back to Young Girl Blues. That's 1992. And uh -huh. you're, uh, you know, a young Canadian in, in Austin, Texas and uh, making your first album. What's that like? Because I, I had been 
so influenced by Texas blues, first of all, um, that I ended up, and I was so influenced by what was coming out of Austin. I mean, at the time, like I said, Stevie Ray had just broken through, the fabulous Thunderbirds. I saw them all, and I saw an Antones road show that had all these Austin artists on it when I was still in Canada, and I was, I was so influenced by what was going on down there. I wanted to go there so bad. So when I ended up down there and signed to a label there and actually having a lot of those artists on my first album, yeah, you can't imagine. It's like Cinderella kind of time, you know. Um, it's really hard to describe. Oh, I understand. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, it just was, it was just like, you know, without sounding, you know, contrived or cliche, it, it just was like a dream come true. I, I you know. I was just uh, beside myself. There was nowhere else I wanted to be. And you talk about um, the fabulous Thunderbirds. You're still working with uh, Jimmy and the family? Yeah, I mean, I go see Jimmy Vaughn as much as I can. He plays regularly in Austin, and um, we've become friends. Um, that's through basically through Mike Flanagan, who produced the Ice Queen album. And he's uh, Mike Flanagan's an old friend of mine. He's playing with me tonight in Austin. Or in, in, in Toronto, I should Toronto, say. In Toronto, yeah. And um, so, yeah, he introduced me to Jimmy, really. They were working together. and uh, But, yeah, it's kind of, I'm kind of part of the family now. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I see this beautiful pink fender in, in your videos. And, I mean, is that your, uh, obviously, your go-to instrument? Do you have any other favorites? Well, yeah, I have, I have um, my regular pink. Fender Telecaster, which I bought in Vancouver when I was 20 years old. Same one I wow. play awesome. at every show I've had for 30 years. Amazing. And um, yeah, and it's a I just got a new one gifted to me from Jimmy Vaughn, another Pink Paisley. So oh. I have another one. And then at Christmas, Billy Gibbons gifted me a third one. So oh. I actually have three of them. <laughs> Two, two are from, one's from Billy Gibbons, one's from Jimmy Vaughn. So those are my three main electric guitars, and then I play a nylon string as well. Wow. So that's uh, that's wonderful to hear. Um, a nylon string as well for, for your less heavy songs? Uh, yeah, we do an acoustic. I also do an acoustic show. I've been um, doing, you know, a residency in Austin for a while now, acoustic, and we do an acoustic portion of our live set usually, yeah. Obviously one of those guitars is going to end up in the Hall of Fame at some point, and... Uh, Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, and a couple of different styles too, there's there's some flamenco in your, in your blood. The nylon string influence I think came through uh, Charo, watching Charo on variety shows when I was a kid, because... Um, like I, I grew up with a, in a family of guitar players, but I didn't know a lot of, I didn't know a lot of uh, women uh, that played. So everyone that I would see made a really indelible impression on me as a young girl wanting to be a guitar player. So Charo, I think that Spanish guitar, I think Leona Boyd also, with the Spanish style acoustic and classical, that mm -hmm. really left an impression. Nancy Wilson from Heart, mm -hmm. Memphis Mini. Um, Bonnie Raitt, of course, uh, Ellen McElwain, people I would find out about, Chrissy Hind, you know, uh, even Joan Jett, I think, were people I saw. Big girls. Women I saw that played sure. guitar. Um, but Memphis Minnie is probably my, my favorite artist of all time. Um, so I try to pay tribute to her at every show. Um, I think she was just a, you know, a fascinating really talented musician and her story was always really I don't know fascinated me sure. um, as a blues artist and a blues woman and woman guitar player and everything like that mm -hmm. so you're driven by obviously by by female artists and, and that's wonderful um, I would think you'd stand out for many young ladies in Canada uh, who aspire to to have a career in music its own set of challenges um, but I've never really wanted to you know like really like even in my studies of women guitar player I know there are challenges but there are specific challenges just to females but there's challenges to guys too I've always realized that it's like it's just a hard business mm -hmm. um, 
and it's hard to, to stay afloat. It's hard to keep going sometimes. Um, there's a lot of pitfalls, <laughs> um, but there's a lot for men and women. So I never, I, you know, I know about the ones for women a little more because I am a woman, but I've never thought that we were exclusive in, you know, the struggle. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Sure. Sure, and I think I think with band. my own um, studies of women art, other women artists, I always want to focus on sort of sort of celebrate it rather than make it about oh you know this is so sure. hard or and and it's not that I have anything against Me Too movement or anything like that. I just I've never really wanted that to be my journey. I always want it just to be like I think most of the women I know they just just want to be seen as players first of all. And not even necessarily females, first of all. You know what I mean? Sure. I actually see yeah. that, and you can feel that in your playing. And that you've talked about that in other interviews, how how the blues is something you feel as a player. And it's, you know, yeah. we don't live yeah, the blues you... like the originators of the blues did, obviously. <laughs> no, our experiences are completely different. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think there's any worse or better... Or, or, or anything, maybe easier in a lot of respects than even just people, you know, life back 40 or 50 years ago was probably a lot more difficult mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure where to go with that question. That's okay. We can, we can just yeah. terminate that one. I think it's better to, you know, not worry about status or roles or whatnot. And just, you know, yeah. be part of the band. And I think music is more about transcending that. Yeah. Um, and all the best players I've known, they never really cared. Sure. Like, they were always just like, if I get up on stage with Billy Gibbons or Jimmy Vaughn, they're not, I mean, they think I'm cool, but if I couldn't play and hold my own, they wouldn't want me on stage just because I was a girl. You I'm going to go straight to that answer when I edit. <laughs> that's the perfect answer. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, so, okay, so that's really cool. Um what about as a Canadian then? Do you do you feel you took a, a part of Canada with you? Or? I definitely do, and I, I really think even like with the concept, the Ice Queen, I, that really does sure. make a statement about my being a Northerner. Um, I mean, the Ice Queen song is is a little bit tongue in cheek, but there is references to being from a place, you know where it's frozen half the year and it's something I really relate to and it's a big, you know, it's just part of me. Um, so, and it's something I'm proud of. I'm proud of being from here and uh, I'm proud of our scene up here and I love coming back. You know, I like both. I just, I don't want to just be one place any anywhere, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of that, there's, you know, there's a South by Southwest, which is huge, and a North by Northeast and uh, how do you feel about that kind of connection now? It's, it's a big part of Austin's identity is live music. So, um, and Toronto's also, you know, really got a great scene too. I mm -hmm. think they, they would make good friends as cities. Well, do you want to talk about how Antone's made that, you know, part of the scene? There was a budding music scene in Austin, on uh, uh, already a budding country and singer-songwriter scene coming around with, with places like the Armadillo World, World Headquarters and, and other venues. But um, Antones started a blues club uh, in 1975 on 6th Street, which at the time didn't have any uh, live music on the street at all. It was, it was basically a desolate street downtown Austin. Now, of course, it's a whole strip of clubs and... Um, but, um, so that's, that, you know, they started in 1975 and what they were doing is they, you know, they got all the young hippies who love blues that played music and they all started hanging out there and then they started bringing down artists from, you know, bringing in artists from, you know, like the, who were still alive and, and people had sort of forgotten about or weren't as aware of and, and then word got out, you know, then people like Muddy Waters and that started calling them and saying, hey, we heard there's a club down here. We want to come. And so they started bringing these guys down, uh, people down from Chicago like Jimmy Reed and Muddy Waters. And um, 
then they would put them up with the young musicians like Jimmy Vaughn and, and Stevie Ray. You know, they'd bring in Albert King and they put Stevie Ray Vaughn on stage with Albert and put Jimmy Vaughn on stage with Muddy Waters. And they started sort of making this connection. And it was young and, and you know, young people. And, and I think it just took off, you know. So by sure. the mid-'80s, it was just blowing up. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Something you said in an interview about B.B. King and how something like you knew it was blues from one note. He could get the whole blues out of one note. Yeah. Um, that's kind of always what's fascinated me about those guys is their individuality, you know, all those masters. Because when I saw Albert Collins, it was the same thing. You know, he played like one note and just blew the place up, you know, just yeah. blew the place out. B.B. King was the same way. I mean, you hear his sound, and you just know it's him. I just, I think that's always been the most interesting thing about blues is you don't really need to be, like, super pyrotechnical. It's, it's not to say it's not a good thing. I mean, Stevie Ray was an amazing technician. But a lot of these guys weren't, it wasn't about techni technical stuff at all. It was more about just their story and their individuality and um, their journey and their style and tone and, I don't know. It just really, in, it really influenced the way I, f the way I see playing guitar. I guess. Well, speaking of technical, you have a, a finger picking style, which is kind of in between or bridges the two styles of music. Yeah, I use a thumb pick, and um, so that you know that comes from playing country blues. Um, so I, I th and that kind of gives me a, a certain individual sound, I guess, because it's got a different quality than a flat pick player. And, and it, it allows me to have an open hand, right hand, so I can play with all my fingers at once. Because mm -hmm. I do a lot of finger picking and sort of country blues stuff. But I apply that those techniques into my electric guitar playing, and it makes, uh, yeah, it's kind of hopefully makes my own style. That's yeah, very unique. Do you want to talk about any of the people that you're working with on the new album? Oh, yeah. The new album is um, it's called The Ice Queen, like I said, and uh, it was recorded in Austin. It's produced by Mike Flanagan, the great B3 player, and uh, it also features Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top and Jimmy Vaughn, and uh, then a whole host of just amazing Texas legends of blues and roots like Charlie Sexton, uh, George Raines, Big Beat Raines on drums, and Chris Whipper Layton from the original Double Trouble band on on drums, and then members of Gary Clark Jr.'s band and Tedeschi Trucks band. It's just got, you know, it's kind of like all the heavyweights. We That's call great. it the Austin Blues Mafia. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you've probably got a million stories, but is there, do you want to give us like one little anecdote from your from your career that uh, that stands out in your mind, either a, from a live performance or a city you visited? Well, I don't know. I think, you know, if I, when I think about this stuff, it always, I always think about the most recent stuff. So I just think, you know, we just did the Jungle Show in Austin, which is a show with Chris Layton on drums, Mike Flanagan on B3, Billy Gibbons, me and Jimmy Vaughn. And I don't know, just for me, just standing there in between all those guys and, and playing you know, kind of sh knocking things back and forth with them. I don't know. that To me, it was just like, I don't know, just something I, I like having an out-of-body experience, you know, listening point. to them talk, talk backstage or yeah. play tunes backstage with them and, and rehearse and just, I don't know, just their whole philosophy about playing and how much they love people like Jimmy Reed and how, how good they are and I don't know, just stuff like that, you know, that sort of stands out right now, because that's just the most recent stuff I've been doing. Well, it's pretty auspicious to be in the same room with those people. Being on the same stage with those people is is another thing, but I, I understand where you're going with that. It's a, to be where you are in your career is is pretty much the, the story. Is there, Are there any cities that, that, other than Austin, that stand out? Um, I mean, musically, probably New Orleans. Mm -hmm. For blues, I guess New Orleans and Chicago for me. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's great. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Like, how do we reach you? Is it uh, you've got a soupoli.com? Yep, 
SueFoley.com. Uh, you know, if you go there, it'll link you to all the other things. Of course, I'm all I'm all over Facebook you, and Instagram. You do the Instas, huh? Okay, great. Oh yeah. Great. People oh, can yeah. follow you all over the place. Oh yeah. And I'm you just too. watching. I'm watching your YouTube <laughs> videos. So great. Oh thanks. So great. So many different looks, and and it's always the pink paisley. Yes, it is. That's great. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that. Right, and we had the Jimmy Lee video on YouTube. That was when we were plugging. That had Jimmy Vaughn in it. So. Oh, that's cool. Thank you so oh, much Jimmy for being Lee. on my show, Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. Sue Foley. <laughs> well, when are we going to get to a bar and get a beer? <laughs> the Cadillac tonight. All right. All right. Talk to you soon.